Hello everyone and welcome back to Riverview or sort of realistic North American themed metropolitan area may be located somewhere in Colorado. In the most recent episode we continued the rapid urbanization and densification of Riverview by redeveloping the old rail yard into this massive new urban development. And I asked you guys for some naming suggestions as the default generated hillside brook is uh, probably not what we want and i want to thank you all for lots of amazing and very creative uh, suggestions the one we're going for might not be the most creative one but it's probably the most fitting one and it's this one by treyambak i'm so sorry if i pronounce your name wrong but the basic suggestion is the yard it connects to the old ray yard and also sounds really modern and cosmopolitan they write and yeah it's it's the perfect fit Anyways, for today's episode, I want to try and keep the scope a little more limited. I am feeling slightly under the weather. Hopefully that doesn't go through my voice. Uh, and I'm a bit busy as well, but I really just wanted to, to play. So what we're going to do is we're going to move up north here to some of these open fields and we'll be redeveloping some rural countryside into some hopefully pretty exciting uh, low density as well as um, medium density modern developments. So yeah, with the under the weather uh, excuse in mind, we're probably going to take it uh, a bit slow today. So I hope you've grabbed a good coffee. Um, let's get started. Um, so what's absolutely actually happening in this episode is we've got developers uh, looking to really exploit the massive demand for more housing here in Riverview. The introduction of the realistic density mod uh, completely changed the fabric of the city as our job count has exploded to what is a more realistic level given the amount of, of actual you know, uh, employee zoning or whatever you'd call it we have in the city. Uh, and this effectively means that we almost have as many jobs as we have people which is obviously a bit of a problem. So uh, residential development is at a, you know, the uh, demand is just insane. One thing that's going to change the look of the Riverview metropolitan area is that we've got some farmers here that have very, very valuable land relatively close to not just Riverview, but especially the downtown core of New Chelsea. Uh, there's, you know, just a couple of miles over here, maybe even less. So what these close to retirement age farmers has found is that there are developers willing to pay a massive premium for their land in order to convert it into residential developments. So we're going to remove these two major farms here to kind of symbolize how developers have bought up this land and are looking to redevelop it. So the primary buyer of this land is the Flock Development Group, led by CEO Kira Flock, and they've argued that the existing infrastructure really isn't mature enough for uh, the amount of density they'll be bringing in. So the this national road we've got here, yeah, the game defaulted it to Birdsong Highway. I just don't know. <laughs> where these highway names come from um, anyways the developers argued with the city that an upgrade to this infrastructure uh, would be fitting given the uh, additional housing units we'd see here so city agreed and in a kind of combined effort the uh, national road here is going to be upgraded into a four lane avenue and we're not going to have a bunch of parking alongside this four lane avenue instead we are are probably just going to immediately add in a bunch of grass on either side so that we can have uh, these avenues be tree lined and they're not meant to be highly accessible to pedestrians or anything like that so i'm probably going to remove a bunch of the crosswalks as well uh, that's some european type stuff we don't need here all right that's the up rates complete and we've got this long ass road just cutting through so with the basic infrastructure upgrade in place next up is the actual road layout within this bought uh, land um, now the developers has an idea of using uh kind of setting up a perimeter almost surrounding the entire plot where you will have some paths and some landscaping so to achieve this, we're going to use the lane and then we'll just create, you know, a bit of a gap between the existing infrastructure, what's already here, and then the new development. Uh, so I'm going to go about three tiles deep, thereabouts at least, 
and just kind of cut through. Now we've already got a bit of development here, uh, a few houses that uh, predate the pur pur uh, purchase sorry, of, uh, of this lot. They were here when the farm was here as well. Not really sure what the story is uh, behind, what the story behind that development is, but we're not gonna actually touch that because it's pretty much an integral part of this area here. Uh, but that's of course also going to help shape how this development is going to look uh, when it's finished as it has to kind of concern itself with uh, the existing structures here. And the same goes for here as well. Uh, but I'm just setting up this perimeter road or whatever we'd actually call it. Trying to make sure that we have uh, some pretty decent alignment. There we go. And do we have now we just need, let's see, adding a node here, deleting this segment, and then hopefully we can have a nice rounded off segment there. Sweet. Um, I'd like a two lane road, not for uh, on street parking, because we're going to have some dedicated parking for the development, but just as kind of the main road that allows entrance to this compound. And over here, we might actually opt for upgrading this to a two lane road as well. Uh, at least until we come down here. I think this is this is probably fine. And then we'll just have a a simple entrance to the new development here. I think for these uh, dead ends here, we'll add in. Uh, two small roundabouts and then let's grab our alley and just align that with the main road here let's see if i can sort of align it with it doesn't have to be the center of the road but something like this and then maybe a roundabout because they are so modern and we're just adding a few extra nodes to kind of smooth this out a bit. There we go. And we'll be adding the same setup over here, grabbing our alley and branching off uh, very close to the end roundabout. Maybe just actually bringing it all the way in due to development. I think we're actually gonna, we'll be adding in an additional road here at around here. No, wait, let's have a bit of more space. Actually, all the way back here. <laughs> it's good I can decide. And just make sure we have the almost perfect connection. And connect that in here. And then the question is if I need a roundabout down here. Or looks, if anything. Let's go for it. So we've got our road layout now, and it uh, looks a bit weird, but also unique, which is uh, what I'm going for. Actually, I've, I've just got a pretty wacky idea. It might be the first time this has been attempted in City Skylines 2, but we're going to do something completely different. And I am going to have to, I'm definitely going to have to flatten the terrain completely for this uh if this is gonna work and i have no idea if it's gonna work but i'd like to create a circle development yeah um I'm, we're we're just gonna try and then we'll see how this works out so i think for starters we're gonna grab ourselves a straight road then we're gonna jump into a continuous tool and we'll move out by one. Connect up over here. And move out by one. And get our connection down here. And let's just check if we've got a perfect circle. Uh, looks like we do. Uh, and then I guess the experimental part begins now. <laughs> We're going to move into our signature buildings and grab one of the, I think this is the smallest row house type development uh, we can grab. And then we're going to fill out this circle. And 
I'm just gonna follow whatever the game wants me to so that we don't have any clipping outside of the circle. So for instance, uh, there'd be a bit of clipping here. And sometimes there's gonna be three on a row, it seems. Sometimes there's only gonna be two buildings in a row, so it's not gonna be completely even. But I'm really looking forward to how this is going to look. Um, yeah, we'll see in just a moment, I guess. <laughs> well, it looks weird, that's for sure. I guess something we could do is just disable some snapping and then move in and add in uh, just a few more here where we've got these open spaces to create, you know, almost a perfect circle. If we actually want to do that, uh, alternatively, we just let it stay like this. There's, oh, yes, whoa. I mean, there's one type of complaint here that we can certainly fix, and that's just, you know, getting a connection so that we can get some, uh, some, uh, some utility coverage in here. Should probably get that. Why? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna disable snapping so I can do it exactly the way I want to. There we go. That should fix that up. And interestingly, we don't have any complaints about path issues, like pedestrian path issues. And that's usually like the, the main issue if we kind of splice buildings together like this. Not that it's actually an issue. People will still move into the buildings, but uh, interestingly, there are no complaints. Let's just get this connection in place and then I guess we'll see if we can do some super cool parking as well. See if that's actually gonna turn out all right. So we're gonna open up our developer menu, of course, and go for road, invisible, the two-way perpendicular, and then the alignment is probably gonna be a bit tricky, but uh, we're gonna try at least see if we can align it. I'm just gonna disable snapping and then just see how far we can take this. I would say, oh wait, the line, yeah, it starts to blur, break around here, but I think this is probably pretty good. I'm kind of looking for a layout where there's just about the same distance across the entire curve between this road here and, uh, and the parking. And this is, this looks pretty good to me at least. Let's see if we can get in a bit more over here as well. Oh, I really want to just imminent domain a few of the buildings here. Uh, it feels a bit cheaty. Kind of goes against what I said earlier as well. Oh, well, all in the name of progress. Would like just a bit of parking here as well. Let's see if we can get the alignment all right. This is probably fine and... We'll use the invisible two-way to create our connection over here. And we'll just go for a straight connection. Something like this. And the same deal over here. Something like that. Does that act? I don't think they connect, do they? Oh, that's not the one. That's not the one either. This one. Yeah, of course, I need to ensure that they're connected. And we'll do that. But the connection over here is fine, and we've already got the first car parked. So uh, let's just get our trees out of the way so we can whoa, do a bit of detailing. We'll need some textures and these parking lots at the very least. And we'll go for this dark pavement surface, and hopefully that's going to... Yeah, it is, it is going to clip to the yeah, parking lots. And of course, I'll I'll move in and do the fine tuning. Don't worry, guys. Just need to uh, get it aligned first. And then hopefully we can use the cars entering as a guidance line to, to uh, adjust the textures near the entrance points. But for now, we're just going to completely eyeball it. So we've got a truck coming up. This doesn't look like a truck truck type development. Uh, and he's not going here either. So, 
Okay, I'll just add the uh, texture to the other parking. Honestly, this is this is kind of cool. I don't really mind the gaps between the buildings either because if I try to place them any closer, we're gonna have these pop-ups about uh, no pedestrian access. And yeah, well, it doesn't matter. It looks looks pretty annoying. Um, but I think we should continue with some more uh, residential uh, development. Uh, maybe have some medium density over here as well, and then break it up with a bit of low density in between. So we're gonna grab this very same building because it's just. Uh, so nice to use just about everywhere and then i'm thinking of creating uh, a few areas over here as well but then maybe grabbing this vista building and kind of mixing that in between actually it has a very deep footprint with like yeah, oh i don't actually want that let's see don't we have some signature medium in white that would fit so this is the one I don't want, which means this is this is exactly the one I want. Okay, so let's just try this. Mix these in between and see how that actually looks. Well, I think that looks I think that looks pretty good. So maybe I'll add a row over here as well of this type of development. Once again, I'll have the flanks be the um this, this uh what's it called not low density the small one oh yeah my my wording is very precise today don't know if you guys have uh, noticed but it's uh going fantastic adding these in let's have a look and see how that looks i think that's pretty nice uh so question is whether we just turn this into like a recreational space uh, some landscaping or oh wow if uh, or if we can fit in a bit more housing um, but for now i think i'm just gonna let that oh wait i need the parking <sighs> sometimes i forget we're in we're in north america somewhere in north america at least so of course we are gonna need parking lots parking 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 and this time around we can do a cool parking lot where we have a segment here and then we're gonna have a segment over here as well let's see we might need to use some anarchy for this one but it just kind of follows the buildings here not too close though something like this is probably fine want a bit of a bit of distance and then question is if we can connect these up with a bit of a curve well i can add a curve here and get that connection going which isn't perfect but it's good enough and then of course we'll need the other type of invisible road and i'm not clicking here so tons of things are popping up we'll need this type of road here and then just get a connection let's see straight connection please there and we do have a connection now we don't have a connection down here but we're gonna get that as well of course and i've heard or i've read that i should be careful in connecting directly onto uh, regular roads because that might cause some issues and we've already got a connection down here sweet let's see can we oh wait and actually, yeah, I'm just going to use the same pavement. I thought I could actually grab it with the pick -a mod but that, of course, grabs the actual parking road. And this should be a cool-looking parking lot. That kind of follows, not the co contours of the land, but the contours of the residential development. Which in capitalist America is the only contour you actually want to care about. And that doesn't actually make any sense given the very impressive 
uh, national park system that the United States has and that I am very envious of as a Dane from a country that has literally no nature. Anyways, our parking is uh, starting to really take shape. We've got, uh, we just got a few, few edges here that we want to fix up. And we've got a, what, what's going on? Oh, it's a fire chopper. Oh, this is bad. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What? what do you mean? What are you doing? And we have another accident here with a fire as well. Police is on scene, but this is bad as well. It's starting to create a bit of a bottleneck here in my cargo traffic. Anyways, back to residential development. Where are we? Oh, up here. So I'm going to remove this zoning here and then compensate by adding the zoning here instead so that the house can actually grow but it can't due to the alignment of the zoning here probably there you go i knew the game was tricking me let's uh let's actually designate a district here so we can follow the um developments here population wise just see so currently we've got oh we've got almost 500 households that's a very good start we're of course gonna be adding some more developments and uh, one part of the agreement that flock development group had to make with the riverview city council uh, to ensure that the city would pay for the majority of the expansion of the infrastructure here was that uh, the new district here had to include a certain percentage of relatively low income slash affordable housing units as well and what we've built so far isn't really in that category it's uh, pretty upscale uh, pretty nice looking so what we'll be doing is we'll uh, kind of fill in this segment here with some more affordable units that are also going to look a little more boring and i think we'll have to dive into some medium residential and we'll probably have to go for the european stuff because the North American themed buildings just look uh, very old, I find. Uh, so they're probably not going to fit in here. We're going to go for some plobable, of course, and then a low level, like level 2 or level 1. Uh, let's see if level 3. We've got, it's about, it's about 4 tiles deep here. And these buildings here are already uh, a little too nice looking. So let's see if we can grab a level 2. Yeah, could do for something like maybe something like this. This looks pretty, pretty plain, I would say. So maybe we'll add a bit of distance. We'll add one and then can we align it? We can actually align it to the other lane to create a bit more of a unique look. So it looks like or sort of looks like a single building at least. Um kind of stitched together like this so we'll see if we can do that over here as well and we can i'm just gonna go through and add these then and see how that how that looks and i think that looks pretty good of course they are of you know they're a bit of a different style compared to these buildings here they do stand out a bit uh and with with greater asset diversity, I would probably have picked something else. But I think um, for for the housing to be really affordable, you're going to have to cut some corners on some of the stuff that you don't want to, you know, raise expenses on. So th this this looks like affordable housing to me, at least. But yeah, ultimately, it is it is also due to a lack of uh, greater selection of assets. Anyways, we imminent domained a couple of bozos here, so we can actually grab the uh, lane here and just drive that through instead of having it end uh, in a roundabout here. So let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, that leaves us with uh, this open space here and this open space here for development. And I'm thinking we'll have a some sort of recreational facility or park here, uh, but maybe just a bit of extra development here alongside these streets here. Uh, so let's uh, let's just move in, get some of these trees and bushes out of the way. 
everywhere actually around this place. We'll manually place some stuff when we do the the landscaping. Something like this. And maybe we should go for some low density stuff this time around. Make sure we've got a few houses at least. Uh, we'll go for some North American. And I don't want the zoning tiles to be more than too wide. Uh, and of course the issue here is getting something that doesn't look like a trailer park. So let's see if we go for level 5. Then these are actually quite nice looking. And they're pretty small in footprint. Uh, which I think is going to be fitting. Because we do have quite a few apartment blocks here. So I don't want these uh, houses to be too big looking. There's a 2x4 variant as well. But I think this 2x3 two two, two is a pretty good way for us to move forward. So let's create a bit of space here. And hopefully there is a decent prop variety. If these even have uh, alternating props. Because they don't really have any backyards of course. Mm. And... And like, yeah, maybe just able to stitch that in here actually is that gonna work on a it is so what we're gonna do is just remove these and remove this one and then we'll grab these again and then we'll just align from the very corner here and then just manually place them something like this looks pretty good and we've of course got got a row over here as well although we could actually add like just a tiny road behind here to make it even more dense we're gonna disable any type of snapping add in the road get the connection going and that gives us a bit of extra space back here we're gonna align very close to these other buildings. Sweet. And the last batch. That looks pretty good, although I guess there really was no reason for this added complexity, unless we also do it here. So why don't we? It's just to make the whole thing a little more interesting. We are reusing a single asset here. Uh, which isn't the most interesting thing to do. So if we just space out the distance to the road uh, a bit. Then that might help a bit. Make it a little more interesting. And we'll rebuild this one. And there you have it. And there is actually a bit of prop variation, such as two houses installing some sun panels uh, on their, what is this, their garages. So uh, at least a bit of variation. Um, a few, whoops, a few single paths to maybe accompany this. Or actually, I need a bit of a master plan as far as the remaining developments go. Or what I could also do is just grab these and place them down here as well. But we might, yeah, we probably need a bit of a parking lot here actually. Since we do have some medium density stuff here. So let's grab these and make sure that there's going to be a bit of room for parking. Um but still fill in the rest with these houses here. So parking lots here. Let's just delete. Last couple of trees. Grab the parking lot from here. And. Get a proper alignment. Maybe get that to swing. Bring all the way around here. Like this, and let's see if we can actually, can we steal small type, the non-parking road, we can. But that's perfect. And we'll just manually align this. 
like this. We're of course going to make sure we add the appropriate markings to the new parking lot. And then we'll need to jump into some detailing with the landscaping we'll do around this entire area. And I don't want to go too heavy on the detailing. Uh, this is starting to be quite a big city and for each type of detailing and each type of building I place, performance is going to degrade by just a tiny amount. Uh, so I think that we're we're gonna continue focusing on focusing on scale here in Riverview and refrain from too heavy detailing. It's just gonna wreck the city. Let's jump into a bit of detailing. I want to preferably use some of the in-game parks as like the base. Uh, of course, these are actually functional, so that's nice. They add desirability to the area, um, but it also just saves me a bit of time. So we're just going to place the basic park here. And let's see if we can just expand the paths a bit with the wonderful anarchy mod. Then we're going to cross the road here and we're going to have some swoopy designs with the pavement path kind of surrounding the complex here. So we'll be using the uh, continuous line tool for this. But probably starting down here at least because then it's going to be easier to just aim at the very center of these zoning tiles and create a bit of an interesting design. Very swoopy and curvy. And then we'll add in some bushes and some flowers afterwards too. Uh, really make it look nice. I think it's, if I was really to decide on the ideal layout, if you ask me, there'd be just be some lots of wild trees here and stuff. And not all this pro landscaping, but you know, developers gonna develop. So, so this is usually how it turns out. Let's just see how this looks. We're going for we, we got a super curvy design here, and then it transitions to something that's a little more swoopy. So probably gonna just redo these real quick. And we can keep that for decorative purposes, maybe. Have these as kinda I don't know what it's supposed to look like, but it does make it maybe a bit interesting. <laughs> but it's fun to just try and create something and then just, you know, see how it how it turns out. Uh, instead of having like a massive plan up front. Okay, we're just going for a, a normal straight connection here. Disable some snapping so we can go straight through these houses. And this looks pretty good. Maybe we should just continue on the side over here. Although I think I'll stop here because there's a bit of an elevation difference here. I had to flatten the land, of course, when creating this uh, interesting circular shape. And then for the texture detailing, I think I'm just going to add a small area here with some, maybe a bit of maintenance infrastructure uh, for some of the caretakers of this area. Groundskeepers or whatever it's called. I don't remember. So I'll just map out a small area here. And that's supposed to be aligned. So yeah. Something's wrong with my eyes. <laughs> okay, I'll just get this fixed. So no OCD. And then let's see. Uh, I'm hoping there's, you know, a tool, tool shed or something I can just place here that's a little more substantial than these. Oh, th these ones. I'm not sure they would look like this for a development such as this. But it's just to have a bit of something added in. Uh, but yeah, I can already see now that if I just reduce the footprint of this, then maybe that's going to look a little better. Like this. Uh, and then for the remainder of this area, we're going to go for um, this grass surface here. Because it's 
nicely manicured. Uh, so let's see the boundaries of all this manicured grass. Well, if we start over here, we are going to use the better bulldozer mod to bulldoze this texture here. And then I'm just going to fill in the entire lot with manicured grass, I think. Although the question is whether we should actually try and follow uh, the actual paths here instead of just the blocks. I think we're going to try just the blocks so that we can also have a bit of wilderness uh, on the more recreational areas that kind of surrounds the whole complex. Something like this. Yeah, and we'll do the same with this block and the other ones. Cool, and then we might just, let's see, I'll have to create a bit of a border here, maybe. Yeah, and then we're gonna do everything within this parameter for the circular development. And actually, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and redo that off camera because I need to add a few, uh, like uh, additional access points to the to the parking lots here. There we go. We've got a few extra paths now. Pretty simple, not high detail. And you know what? I really liked the way that the manicured grass kind of surrounded the circular development here and extended onto these paths. So I've went ahead and done that for the rest as well. Uh, so on this perimeter here, we're just going to have uh, a bit of bushes and some, some trees just like naturally wild grown. And then within the kind of manicured sections, the, uh, you know, landscape sections will have something that is uh, a little more uh, structured looking because it's all been uh, planted, of course, as part of this development as there just used to be farmland. So I'm just going to remove the random... Uh, bobs and bits within here so we've got a clean slate to work with uh, but i think the first thing we now uh, we, we're gonna wait with detailing or adding in the trees and bushes to these areas here and then we'll start with the manicure parts and we'll just do some simple stuff like adding in these different types of flowers here and there in a very like structured manner so here for instance we can add a row and an additional row and then we can grab another set of flowers and add in a few more rows Then we can grab one of the really small segments here add that and further add these and maybe just finish off like that and kind of just go through and add this to uh, to parts of this de development
And I think that concludes the detailing session. This really is one of those type of areas where you can just go absolutely ham and spend an hour or two maybe uh, just detailing up. Um, but I want to keep it relatively simple at least because in the context of the entire metro area, this is just a very small part of it. Uh, with that said, I'm pretty happy how it turned out. And I think I've kind of changed my mind on these outskirts here where we've got a bit of like uh, different textures and lots of bushes and stuff. Um, it's a it's a deliberate choice on part of the development group to actually just let this kind of grow wild and ensure that there's just a tiny bit of biodiversity within this lot. So it's not just all manicured grass. So I think that's a really nice, conscient choice. Uh, really Vogue as well. Uh, no, it's, it's not Vogue. It's just it's a good idea. Uh, we need more biodiversity. Anyways, I'm going to need some input on the naming here because I'm thinking Bedford Downs is not what we want to name this. So if you got a cool suggestion, then please let me know in the comments down below. And if you've got a suggestion for what you would also like to see developed in Riverview, then I'm all ears as well. I'm going to wrap up with some uh, hopefully good final cinematics and I hope to see you all in the next one. Goodbye.